Hi, and thanks for joining me on today's course in setting up general ledger integration using Aloha Insight. Now, Insight allows you to create GL reports for most of the major providers, such as QuickBooks. So let's take a look at how to get this set up. Now, the first thing that we need to do is a little bit of company and site setup. And to do that, we're going to go to System Setup. Then we're going to go to Company Setup. And inside Company Setup, we have a tab called Sales Reporting Modules. So we'll go ahead and click that. And then there's a button for GL Export Settings. So we'll take a look at the GL Export Settings. And basically, this setting will allow you to create up to five additional columns for any of your GL reports. Now, this is going to differ based on the different providers that you use. And it'll allow, like I said, up to five different columns. You may not need to use all five columns, but they're there in case. Now, the place that you'll find these additional settings will be inside the Guide to GL Integration, which we're going to include. So if you scroll down to about the second page, it shows you the different column names that are recommended per provider. So we have setups in there for ACPAC and Great Plains and some different ones. Uh, for today's example, we're going to use QuickBooks. So you can see that for the four additional columns that they need for QuickBooks, they're listed right here. And all you have to do is simply copy and paste those into the values in Insight. As you can see, I've already dropped these in. So I'll just go ahead and click Save. And then we'll click Save again. Now you'll want to refer to your individual provider's documentation in order to find out uh, if those columns need any specific values in there. So we'll discuss that here in a moment. The next place that we're going to look at is under Site Setup. Now in Site Setup, we're going to click on Add Modify Stores. And this will show all of the stores that you have within your company. Now this is a demo site, so you can see there are a number of different sites in here. And for today's example, I'm going to use Fort Worth Downtown. So I'll simply double click it, and it shows all of the uh, specific settings for this site. Where we're going to go specifically, though, is going to be in Advanced Settings. And then you can see here there's a section called General Ledger Export Settings. Now these are additional store level identifiers that you can place in for each site and it just allows you to have some additional reporting. So that could be things like store regions or if it's a test store or um, just any specific identifiers that you want to give to individual stores. Now this is an optional process so if you have one site or even if you have multiple sites and you don't want to set that up that's also okay. So you can see here we've put in GL setting 1, 2, and 3 and we'll go ahead and click Save. Now we're ready to build the actual report. So at this point I would have my chart of accounts sitting next to me and the first place I'm going to go to is under Aloha Insight and we're going to go to Reports Builder. Now the Reports Builder function is going to allow you to build any kind of report as it relates to Insight. So you can build sales reports and labor reports and, and whatnot. But for today's purposes we're going to build our GL report. So to do that we're going to click Add and the first thing we need to do is make sure that the report is going to be active and we give it a name. So we'll name this 1031.17 GL report. You can put a description if you'd like to and then you need to choose the report style. So the style of the report is going to be based on the provider that you use. You should only see your provider listed in here but if not you may have to uh, scroll down to find it and so like I said we're going to use QuickBooks as our example today so we're going to use QuickBooks GL any of these that say legacy you want to avoid those and just use the most current version so we're going to use QuickBooks GL and then you need to choose a category to put this report into So it's basically just for file keeping purposes and you can see from the categories we have it all categorized by different uh, areas so you can put it into accounting or comps or you know human resources for this though we keep it under custom and that's what we recommend so that you can see all of your custom reports we'll go ahead and click save and continue and now it's going to ask you what security classes you want to include in this report and this is set up under uh, system setup for today what we're going to do is we'll say that we want to give everyone full access to this so we'll let everyone see this report and we'll click next the next section says to define the report groups for the report now this isn't specific to the GL report this is more just for the reports builder in general and for example if you wanted to do let's say a sales report and you wanted to list your sales by breakfast lunch and dinner you could create three different 
report groups and you can put data inside each of those. However, for the GL reports, what we're going to do is only create one group. So to do that, we're going to click Add, and then you need to give it a name, and you can basically name this whatever you like. I'm just going to call it GL Report for today, and we'll click Save and Continue. Now you can see that our group has been created, and now we simply need to build the lines that go inside this group. So I'm going to click on the group itself, and now the system says specify the line items for this group. So with my chart of accounts sitting next to me, what I'll do is start to build out each individual line as it relates to data that's pulled from Aloha. So let's start. I'm going to build a few lines for you today, and we're going to start with a basic one. So I'm going to click Add, and the first thing that we see in here uh, is to select a custom report line item. Now we have two different tabs on here, one that's called line item options and one that's called general ledger setup. Now for the line item options, consider this as the section where you're going to pull information from Aloha. And for the general ledger setup, this is where you're going to put in your specific chart of account information. So let's go ahead and do one. Uh, I'm going to name this one food sales. It's a pretty basic category. Most everyone has a food sales type category in their system. So I'm just going to put that down under the line item name. And the next thing that I need to do is go to my general ledger setup and tell Insight where I want to point my food sales to as it relates to the chart of accounts. So I'd simply have my chart of accounts next to me. I'd find my food sales and put in the account number and then I'd put in the account name, which we'll say for today is going to be the same. We'll call it food sales. Then you're going to choose how you want to report the account, whether you report it as a debit or a credit. Now typically what we would do for these reports is cr uh, count them as a credit, and then we come down to our company general ledger settings. Now like we said before, these are those additional columns that you can create at the company setup level, and you can see here that we have our uh, QuickBooks columns that have been created inside here. Now what you could do here is put in any of the specific values that QuickBooks might need. So for instance, the transaction type might be general journal from QuickBooks. Um, additionally, if you had something that you wanted to put in the name category, you could type it in there, or we also have these keys to the outside, which will allow you to select specific keywords. So I'm going to click that and you can see here that we have um, pre-populated data that can go into this column. So that could include something like the Insight Store ID or the store's name. We also have those specific store settings that we talked about earlier. Um, so that could be different classes or regions for your stores. You could even put the day of the month. And if you were to click on these, what they'll do is you can see here it automatically populates it in there and it'll point back and pull the date of the month. So we'll click OK. and now that's ready to go. So now that we've put our food sales to point to the information in our chart of accounts, we need to point it to our data that we want to pull from Aloha. So to do that, we go back over to our line item options, and we go down here to determine where we're going to pull this. Now these are all categorized, and you can see here we have all kinds of different categories, comps, deposits, we have things like labor and uh, payments, we also have sales information, taxes, tips, and voids, so on and so forth. Now with any of these categories, if you click on them, so for this one, we're going to do food sales, so we're going to go to the sales category, you can see all of the different data points that can be pulled as they relate to sales. So you could be as generic or as specific as you wanted to. What I mean by that is uh, for gross sales, for instance, if I wanted to just report gross sales, which is very generic, I could just click that one and include it, and if I didn't know exactly what that meant, I could click on definition, and it's going to show me that gross sales is the total amount of item sales, including order mode charges, surcharges, and all taxes. You could also be super specific if you wanted to, so we could choose gross sales by day part, by revenue center, by sales category, which is laser focused on one specific area to pull data from. Now when we're building the food sales, since we're doing sales in general, what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to do net sales by sales category.
because we're choosing one specific category that we want to report. So I'm going to select that and click Next. And now you can see that Insight asks, what sales categories do you want to include in this line item? So at this point, you would choose any of the categories that would roll up into food sales. And typically, you would have a category called all food or something to that nature. But for today's example, I'm going to choose just a few of these, and we'll say that these are our food sales for today. So we'll choose a few of these. We'll click to include them. And now you can see that all of these categories are going to roll up into food sales and it's going to report to whatever we put under the general ledger setup. So I'll click next and there's our first line. We have food sales that's been created. Now I'll create another line to show another example and for this one let's call it liquor sales. So we've named it as liquor sales once again we need to point it to our account on the chart of accounts so we would put in whatever the account number is and the account name we list it as a credit and then for the transaction type you could put in general journal or whatever your provider specifies and now we can go back to line item options since this is sales we're gonna to go to the sales category and once again we're gonna do net sales by sales category We'll click Next, and now we need to specify what rolls up into liquor sales. So I'm just going to go down here, we'll find liquor, we will include it, and then we'll click Next, and there's our second line. So you can see it's a repetitive process, you just continue to do this with all of your different sales categories, and then once you get all of those in, what you're going to do is report on the other side of the ledger which would be any of your payments so to do that it's almost exactly the same process we'll go ahead and click add and for our example today we'll put in Amex payments so we've typed that in we go to general ledger setup put in the account number for whatever our Amex payments would be put in the account name and the only difference here is that we report the account as a debit since it's on the other side of the ledger. You'll then put in your specific information as it relates to the provider. And we'll go to line item options. And now since we're doing payments, we're going to choose the payments category. So once again, you have all of your different options here as it relates to payments. Uh, you could do things like tender count, which would just give you uh, a count of how many times an Amex payment was used during a specified period. You could do tender dollars, which would just give you a complete total of all of the money that was spent. But what we're going to do is since we're reporting by individual tenders, we're going to use tender dollars by tender type. We'll click next. And now the system says, what tenders do you want to include in this line item? So we have Amex payments, and we just need to specify what rolls up into Amex. So again, you should only have you know, one to two categories for Amex. We'll include those, and then click Next. And there's our next line. So you can see that this is in black to specify that it's on the other side of the ledger from our food and liquor sales. So you'll continue with all of your payments, and then you'll enter in things like your comps and promos. You would also enter tips, voids, and anything else that's on your chart of accounts. Now once you get all of those completed, we're ready to actually run this report. So to do that, we're going to click Save, and we'll click Done. And to view the report, we go here to Aloha Insight Reports Viewer. So for the first step in our reports viewer process, it asks what report category you want to run. So if you remember, we saved this under custom, and you can see all of the different reports that you've created. Now what I'm going to choose is the report that we just made, and we'll click next. And now we have the report options. So the options in here, uh, we have three different tabs to choose from, store selection, report settings, and report schedule. And we're going to start with store selection. Now in store selection, the first option you have here is to use a saved report. 
Now, since this is our first time building the report, we're not going to choose anything up here at the top. But if you wanted to run reports in the future, you could choose this and choose one of your saved reports to use as sort of a template. We're going to go down here to use selected stores. And this is just to choose which stores you want to include in the report. Now, this defaults to all stores. So if you want to change that and do one specific store at a time, you just click this button. And then inside the button, it'll allow you to choose individual stores. So I'm going to choose Fort Worth Downtown and click Next. And you can see that this is the one that I've currently selected. Then we'll go to our report settings. And inside the settings, this determines uh, just what you want to see from a timing perspective uh, and a formatting perspective for your reports. So the first one is to choose your date range options. And inside here, we have tons of different options for choosing a date range. And what we would typically do for a GL report would be a last fiscal period or something to that nature. Now, what we would suggest for the first time that you run this report is to run for a fiscal period that's already been closed out so that you already have that report printed. You can see that the numbers are correct and you can kind of use that as your control against any issues that you might have with running this report. So I'm going to choose last fiscal period. We'll just assume that we've already closed it out. And you can also use a custom date range if you wanted to. Now we'll go down to report send options. So this allows you to just choose how you want to see the report, whether you want to view it on the portal, uh, you can view the report now, you can email yourself the report, or you can uh, email it to other people at a defined schedule, and you can even change the name of the report. Now what we're going to choose for the first time is to list the report on the portal. And the, re the portal is basically just the login page. So it's the, the jump page when you first log into Insight. So we're going to list this on the portal. And then under our other report options, we need to choose the format of the file that we need to create. Now in the guide, once again, if we scroll down to the very bottom, what you'll be able to see is that we have the specified file formats that we recommend. So for the file types here, it shows all the different providers. And we can see here that for QuickBooks, they need to have a tab delimited IIF file. So all we would need to do here is choose the file type, which is a delimited file, choose your delimiter, which is going to be a tab, and then choose the extension type, which here is going to be an IIF file. You could also include quotation marks, uh, you can change your language and formatting options, suppress currency symbols if you didn't want to see them, and you could even put a restaurant logo on there if you wanted to. So that's the, uh, the preferred file type that we have. What we would recommend as well, though, is to run this as an Excel file for the first time that you run this report. That way you can easily see the data that's being pulled and you can match it against your chart of accounts to see if there are any discrepancies. Once that's done, the final tab here is Report Schedule. Now, we don't want to schedule this report yet because we want to make sure that we uh, address any errors that might be in the report itself. So we'll show you how to report that here in just a moment. So I'm going to click Save. And if you remember, I said I want to list this on the portal. So I save. The report's processing. And we'll jump over to the portal. And you can see under Non-Scheduled Reports, our report is processing. When it's ready, an icon is going to pop up. And it's going to indicate that the report's ready to be read. So we can see the Excel icon. We can see that our report is ready. And we simply need to click on it and we'll open the report. So once the report opens here in a moment, we're going to view it. And this is what the report would look like in an Excel format. So it shows you all of your different columns. So we can see here we have our transaction, transaction ID and transaction type, the date, the account number that we created, class of transaction, the amount of the transactions, the memo or the name that we would see on the chart of accounts, and then any of our specific identifiers. Now this will differ uh, depending on the provider that you use, but in the guide, at the very end of the guide, it shows you sample GL reports. So you can see here that this is what it's supposed to look like, 
and it's color coded so it lets you know whether it's automatically created by insight uh, whether you define those values so these are those four additional columns that we created and then also if we have any specific values that we put in there or if it was pulled automatically from Aloha so you can use that as kind of your legend if you need to uh, check against any of these values and you're wondering what they might mean now what we need to do to make sure that this report balances is to simply go to the amount column and you can highlight all of your amounts now obviously for today's example we've only built three lines so you would have many many more lines in here but all you would do here is select those values and check down here for the sum and the sum should be zero that all of your payments would match all of your sales and it would make a uh, sum of zero but we can see here that we're about sixteen hundred dollars off and what you could do at that point is go into each individual line and check this against that original um, period that you've closed out and just make sure that all the values match so we could take a look and say yep our food sales match uh, what we had on the period that was closed but for whatever reason Amex payments might be off so we would know at that point to go specifically to this uh, row and look at Amex payments to see if maybe we didn't include a, a payment type or maybe we just missed something. Um, keep that in mind too when you're putting in your comps and promos. It's very important that you create your comps and promos on both sides of the ledger in order to make sure that they balance one, each, one another out as well. And that just depends on the provider that you use. We'll discuss how to contact support if you have questions about that here in just a few minutes. So let's assume that this report is correct and that everything does actually balance. Our next step is to schedule this report. So to do that, we can just close our report. We'll go back into Insight. And now down here under Non-Scheduled Reports, again, we can see our report. And you can schedule it from this screen as well. To do that, you just go over here to our Options and click on the pencil to edit the report. This brings up our edit selections again and now all we need to do is change our file type back to the tab delimited IIF which we would do with that in this section and schedule the report so to do that you would click the report schedule tab choose schedule report and set in your specific time settings so we'll say that we want to run this at 9 a.m. central time We'll choose no end date, that we just want this to run all the time. And then you can choose your delivery options. You can choose daily, weekly, monthly. You can choose it at the end of every specified period. So you can choose different pay periods or fiscal periods. And what we'll do is we'll choose that we want to run this monthly. And we'll say we want to run it on the first day of every month. You can then choose your subscriber options, who you want to send it to, whether it's yourself or other users via subscriber groups and you can set that up under system setup once that's all configured you'll click save and now you'll see that our GL report has jumped up here to the top it's under scheduled reports it shows you the last time that it ran and the next time that it will run which is 11 1 at 9 a.m. so if you are having issues with your reports we do have some resources available to you if you go down to support and training there are a few sections inside here. The first is online help, and this contains all of the documentation as it relates to Aloha Insight. So we have the different help files, and for these, you would choose Report Builder as the first help file to take a look at. And then under Aloha Insight FAQs, we have additional documentation. There's one called the Guide to General Ledger Integration, which is the guide that I've been showing you throughout this course. We also have frequently asked questions for some of the different providers. So if I had QuickBooks and I wanted to learn a little bit more about it, I could open up that GL integration guide and it'll show you the frequently asked questions for QuickBooks. We also have the training schedule which will allow you to sign up for this class and this class specifically is 1.6 Aloha Insight General Ledger. You would select it, choose a date and time, put in your information, and then click sign up and you'll have an email that's sent to you with the meeting information. Now we'll be running these courses quarterly in the future. Additionally we have the training videos where you can see all of the different uh, videos that we have as they relate to Aloha Insight. 
And then finally, if you're having issues and you just can't figure out what to do, you can always use the Contact Us button, which is right here. You'll select your store. So we would say Fort Worth Downtown is having an issue. We'll choose our module name. And for this one, it's going to be Aloha Insight Reports Builder. We would put in our report information, or the name rather, your contact information, and then status notes. So that would include something like, I can't get my GL report to balance, the Amex field is off by $200, can someone please help? So on and so forth. As soon as you click save, this is going to generate a ticket with the help desk, and they'll reach out in order to help you with this. So that was a quick look at the GL uh, integration process using Aloha Insight. We'd like to thank you for your time, and best of luck on building your reports.